How's it going everyone, it's me Vivi, and we're back to another Sly Cooper video. You're probably happy, you probably have a huge smile on your face, or maybe you're like, oh, what is he gonna talk about this time? <laughs> I don't know, but here we go. So this time we are going to talk about something which has never surfaced until now. It probably did in certain regions, but not in the US, you know, North America, basically. The user you see on screen right now sent me this. Something I had no idea about. And a thank you, by the way. I take it 95% of you had no idea about this. This was never brought up before. Maybe in Japan. That's the region I'm referring to specifically. But here in North America? Nope. Not even in those History of Sly Cooper videos I've seen. A Sly Cooper manga. Yep. This wasn't any ordinary manga, which, you know, comes in volumes, books, standalone, you know. This was part of a monthly manga magazine called Comic Bomb Bomb, alternatively known as Comic Bon Bon. This company was a competitor to Koro Koro, which is still active and running today. Comic Bomb Bomb began in 1981 and lasted until December 2007. It got rebranded as an online publication on July 2017 under the name Pix4. Comic Bomb Bomb and Koro Koro both made short spread out manga series while adaptations through monthly magazines. Around 700 pages, yes. Pretty much phone books. They were about like tie-ins of anime, TV, toys, and video games. Now the difference between this manga you see, this picture, and Ratchet and Clank's manga, yes I did make a video on that one in the past. Ratchet and Clank was released as two separate mangas, actual volumes 1 and 2, which I did find on eBay, which is pretty cool, even though I don't understand Japanese, you know, a collectible. Anyways, some manga series started as one-shot mangas anyways. Dragon Ball, let's go with that example since a lot of you are probably aware with that series, right? It later got re-released as actual mangas. Well, one-shot manga for Dragon Ball is probably not the proper technical term to be using. One-shot mangas usually consist of one-chapter books, pretty much standalone. But Dragon Ball, it did have a bunch of chapters through monthly issues for years. I'm not sure if this is what happened with the Ratchet and Clank manga in Japan, since you know it got popular and then they decided to release two books. I mean, two books? Compared to other series out there, it's uh, either normal, you know, the author wanting to produce one chapter, one story standalone, or it has to do with its popularity. The more popular it is, the more the series expands. Now, Ratchet and Clank's manga was non-canon from what you can see, just with the pictures alone. I mean, you're like, uh, what is this? Uh, what timeline? What uh, universe? It's completely different. Same should apply for this Sly Cooper manga. It uh, ran its course between January 2005 and September 2005, with the name Sly Cooper Phantom Thief, which Kaito Sly Cooper, known in Japan, translated to English, we get Phantom Thief. Now looking at the archived page where you can find a bunch of old comics, well, mangas, using Google Translate, there it says Kaito Slip Cooper Man, but it's supposed to be Sly, it's just due to this rough translation we get Slip instead. As you can see this ran for 8 months. A chapter was published each month and was part of that monthly issue of Bomb Bomb. Now Sly Cooper, this one was made by Soji Imaki. It ran from 2005 of January to September 2005. Goofy Goods Gaffling Escapods, with the PlayStation 2's Thieving Raccoon, never re-released. So yes, this was actually released, you know, via monthly issues in Japan. It never re-released, meaning never got republished through, let's say, standalone books. Perhaps it has to do with its poor popularity in Japan, you know, back then. Not everything was retrieved, unfortunately, but uh, June 2005's issue, I'm guessing that was the full chapter for the monthly issue of Bomb Bomb, 15 pages. Now the funny thing is, Japan never received Sly 3 until the collection in 2011. One would think, okay, the timeline is probably placed after Sly 3, you know, 2005, just from a quick glance at the date, in terms of character development at least. But technically, Sly 3 released in North America after the Sly manga ended. So I take it they went with the concept of 1 and 2, you know, personalities, character development, and produced the story out of that. Just looking at this image right here, they do look like younger. But Carmelita, I gotta say, she looks human. Like, very close to it. Now, May 2005, the title says Sly Battles a Murder of Crows. 
Samurai Crows. We only have this one tiny picture on the left, that's it. July 2005, Sly snatches the Ryan Egg and runs a fool of Captain Otto. Wait, Otto? As in Otto Van Cooper? You guys might say. Time travel? I don't think so. So it's probably another Otto. August 2005. Now this one is what caught my interest a bit. It's a story, let's say, more from Carmelita's side, you know, the FBI running after Sly, but not the usual kind of running after. More like assassinate. Not capture, but kill. I think this is something you guys also brought up in the comments in the past. Hey, what if you have this sort of agent of law running after Sly, but wanting to kill him? And then you have Carmelita, who you know has feelings for the guy. She works for the law enforcement. But then you have someone else from the law enforcement actually wanting to kill Sly. Carmelita, despite her working for the law, she's not going to be able to accept that. If ever the series expands to, you know, another couple of games, I wonder what a villain, a bad guy, an unusual type of bad guy would be like. Someone who, yes, follows the law, but sees Sly in a complete different sort of way. Enough for them to get convinced, to assassinate Sly. But anyways, let's move on. These mangas were targeted for ages between 6 and 12. This wasn't any sort of, you know, shonen manga, 13 and up. The one from June 2005, that one's 15 pages, Sly and Bentley explore the pyramids and contend with Oniris, the king of the netherworld. Netherworld, another word for it, is the underworld, known as Hell, an ancient Egyptian mythology. Just looking at uh, the name Oniris, this isn't Hades or anything like that, not Greek. Looking at these, from what I understand, they visit a pyramid in Egypt. Something happens, they get buried under a pile of rocks, and they end up being dead. Looking at the rings above their heads, they end up in hell. They meet Carmelita as one of the guards of King Oniris. Sly's like, uh, what the heck is Carmelita doing here? She kicks him. He was probably using his charming words as usual, but it didn't work. He just got kicked. Sly, I think here, w well, it's obvious, he faces the king's uh, watchdog, is it? It looks like a dragon slash dog kind of hybrid. Sly spins the guy, Sly Cooper's strength right there, and then Murray... <laughs> Murray shows up out of nowhere. Like, I don't understand what the speech bubbles say, but I'm just looking at the pictures, and then boom, you have Murray showing up out of nowhere. They all bow down to the Murray, and why is that? If someone can translate this, that'd be awesome. Maybe they're not technically dead, maybe they're in some sort of coma, maybe got to hit on the head, of course, and they're seeing their friends. Carmelita being a guard for some reason, and then we have the Murray showing up. Anywho, I think this is it for the video, guys. Tell me something. Did you know about this, or did you not? Until now. You know, the manga I'm referring to, of course. Tell me what you think. Do you find the pictures funny? Do you like the drawing style, the artistic style? I mean, do you under do you know how to read Japanese, maybe? I mean, it'd be sweet if you could translate this, alright? So with that being said, guys, I've been Vivi, and thank you so much for watching.